All right, here's my topic of today. I like getting controversial ti uh, titles. So today's topic is, if you join a cover band, you're doomed for failure. Well, not really. But here's what happened. This is what I noticed years ago, back in the 90s when I was in my cover bands and stuff like that. Uh, I was also in original bands too. I was always trying to get into the original stuff more and uh, just... I don't know. It's, it's, uh, you, you, there's so many cover bands out there that have the mentality that, no, you can never play originals because nobody will ever hire you. But then you, you're playing covers of bands that are original. <laughs> you know what I mean? So when you think about it, uh, that, that statement is not really true. Uh, and no, you don't have to become a, you don't have to get a record label to play originals. Like it doesn't work like that, especially nowadays. Maybe 50 years ago, it might have worked like that, but nowadays, no. Uh, no, you, you can, there's lots of places that will allow you to play originals. It's just, you have to seek them out. Uh, what we used to do back in the nineties, when I was in my band called syndicate, what we used to do is a lot of opening acts because we had 10 original songs, which wasn't enough to fill the night, but plus we were also a cover band, right? So, uh, a lot of times what we would do just to showcase our own songs is we'd open up for people. And that was always really cool because then we could just play all our originals, right? And, uh, yeah, I was doing that. But one thing that always broke up bands that I found, whether it was my band, somebody else's band or whatever, is people would get bored doing the same set list over and over and over again. And I'll tell you, tell me if this sounds familiar, uh, especially those of you who probably go to bars a little more and watch live music a little more than I do. But every time I see a live band, I can almost guarantee you by the first song they play, I know what the rest of the set lists are going to be. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, it's almost like, okay, they're all going to play Sweet Home Alabama. That's fine. Love the song. It's a great song. Uh, they're going to play Sweet Caroline. They're going to play uh, Hotel California. They're going to play all these songs, right, that are great songs, but overplayed. They like, just played to death, right? And then you'll get a band that'll say they'll play like a, a Blink-182 song or a Green Day song or, you know, whatever. You know they're going to play everything from early 90s, right? which is fine too. Uh, you know, people find their genre and, and whatever when it comes to covers, uh, unless they're a tribute band. Uh, some tribute bands, well, obviously, uh, like there was a band called Comfortably Numb. They were a Pink Floyd cover band and they were, they were absolutely awesome. There was Alive, which was a Kiss cover band. They, you know, they did all the makeup, everything like that. Uh, Great Scott, a band that I tried out for. Uh, I, I, I made it in. It's just, I, I ended up because of work and life, I, I told him I couldn't do it, you know, which was too bad. I should have probably stuck with it, you know, but you know, uh, they, they were ACDC cover band. They're still going to this day and they, they play all over the place. So there's all these cover bands that, uh, uh, you know, I'm sure there's like all kinds of, you know, slip, slip, not tribute bands and you name it. You know, there's, uh, uh, guy called wild P in the spirit. He was kind of a, in a Jimi Hendrix, uh, cover band for a while. And then he kind of did his own thing. And then he, I don't know what happened to him now. I don't know if he still plays now. I can imagine he does, but, uh, I saw him quite a few times. He was really cool. You know, he was like the Canadian Jimi Hendrix. <laughs> yeah. Really cool guy. Uh, I talked to him once or twice there and whatever, but I seen him, you know, and, and he, 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 like he played the part, right. Uh, but for the others that do like mixed, uh, cover bands or even country rock, uh, rock, uh, whatever it might be. Uh, don't ever feel that you can't throw in originals. Uh, cause most of the time, like it, it depends what it is. Like if you're going to be death core or, or something like that, yeah, there's very few places you can play death core or whatever, you, you know, nothing against the genre, but it's, it is a very limited niche kind of, uh, area. Like, yes, there's millions of people around the world that love it. But, uh, when you're going into an establishment that has to kind of cater to everybody, you got to pick the middle of the road stuff and, well, death core is not that, <laughs> you know, uh, but that said, if uh, a band like say El Vady showed up, uh, to play your average local bar, they're so talented that they could get off with the, uh, you know, folk death metal because it's just so unique to listen to that. It'd be people, you know, there would be no, well, oh, these guys suck, get off the stage. They'd be like, wow, the, you know, this is incredible to watch, you know, because they're that good. Or if like Nightwish showed up, you know, with the, uh, you know, operatic, uh, symphonic metal, you, you know what I mean? Or Epica, you know what I mean? Like, like those bands, they're at a level where it doesn't matter where they play. People are going to love it. Uh, they could play at a country Western place and people would still love it. They'd be blown away by it. Right. Even if it wasn't their genre, just cause it's so well done. Uh, 
Whereas if you're playing, say, hard rock at a country bar, a lot of times you get away with it. Why? Because like you could still play Metallica at a country bar. You know what I mean? Like, cause it's, it's Metallica has become, you know, like we're talking like the black album stuff. Right. Um, you know, like we used to do it everywhere you go, people play Inner Sandman. You could even get away with uh, Symphony of Destruction uh, from Megadeth in a country bar because people like the song. Why? Because it's just well done. You, you know what I mean? Uh, but you might not get away from, uh, you might not get away with Peace Cells or you might get away with Peace Cells most of the time. Anytime I've ever played it, <laughs> you know, uh, anytime I've ever played Megadeth stuff live, people have always really loved it. Didn't matter where we played, whether we played in the, the sticks or we played in the city, it, it didn't matter. Uh, but the thing is, is that, um, one thing I did notice is after you play, uh, um, you know, your set lists live two or three times, there's a lot of songs you're like, you know, it's a good song, but I'm so sick and tired of playing it. And there's a whole bunch of songs I have like that. Like, I just don't want to play them anymore, you know? And it's like people get on stage and they get this kind of paranoia of that. If I don't play what the audience is yelling out there, uh, they're not going to like me. Just play whatever you're going to play, but change it up. So your band bandmates don't get, uh, you know, you know, too sick of the song because they get sick of the song. It's no longer fun. And the number one thing you should always keep in mind is, yeah, I'm going to wait for time here. Yeah, I'm doing good. Uh, number one thing is to have fun, right? So what I used to do with one of the bands I was in is we'd play a set list and we'd try to drop three songs a song per set every show. But when we were playing four nights a week, it was kind of hard to do that. But when we weren't, it's like, okay, let's learn an extra four or five songs. And okay, let's get rid of it. I'm sick of this one. Everybody pick a song they, that they were sick of and just get rid of it, right? Unless it was a song that you knew was like a real, real, real good crowd pleaser. You might do it once in a while, you know? So it was good to have alternate set lists. Uh, oftentimes what would happen is I'd get into a band and... Uh, it was almost better if the band was a little bit rough and took a little longer to get going than if it was like we clicked right away and it's like, okay, yeah, the first, uh, the first time we jam, we jam for like six, eight hours and we've got like, uh, you know, three, four sets ready to go. Uh, okay. Yeah. Let's just book a gig, you know, and then, you know, consider the gig, uh, another practice, but we're, you know, if you're doing three chord rock stuff, you could usually throw it in so fast that it, whatever, but then you, it's like, you'd book so many gigs that you'd never have time to get rid of stuff, you know, and then uh, I'm sick of this bass players out of here. Uh, drummer quits. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the guitar player doesn't want to play anymore because I'm so sick of that song. You know what I mean? So always keep it fresh if you're doing covers or, or you will be doomed for failure. Uh, it's just my experience that I've had over the years. Um, one thing I, uh, when I started doing the jam nights again, uh, a couple of years ago, and I'm, hopefully this year I'm going to do a lot more of them, uh, the jam nights and hopefully, you know, but I need a band. I, I like, I'm kind of sick of the jam nights. Uh, I'm not sick of them, but it's like, okay, I love my 15 minutes of fame. It's fun. I YouTube it, whatever I do good. I don't do good, whatever. Uh, but, uh, I do want to get up there with a full band and just really, really show you guys what I can do a well-rehearsed band, you know? And, uh, cause I know when I'm in a well-rehearsed band, how well it goes. But the last thing I would say is that, um, you know, like have fun first, but change it up. Uh, cause like one thing I, I, I always get, get complimented on, uh, when, uh, I do do the jam nights, whether I do well or I'm playing songs, people like her you know, songs, they never heard of before. Trust me, nobody's ever heard of the Teresa songs I've ever played before, but you know, you can get people really laughing on those ones. Uh, but, um, they would say, wow, you never play the same song twice, <laughs> you know, like very rarely. I said, yeah, because, uh, you know, like it, it, I've always wanted to give you something new. Uh, so the only time I play a song twice is if, uh, especially if I'm uh, recording it, basically is if I don't do it well, well, the next time I'm going to try to do it better and get a good version of it, right? And then move on. And there's some songs that you just, you can't get. <laughs> uh, but I like to do a song, okay, I did it, did it well enough, okay, move on. Uh, because if you're going to do covers, like you could do a different cover every day of your life and you would never do every song. You know, there's just billions of songs out there, right? So anyway, uh, I'll leave it at about that. Uh, yeah, so, you know, don't be afraid to change things up. Uh, make sure that if your band is busy, that you do leave your guys, uh, you know, time to get new, new, new material coming in. 
you know, even if it's like, okay, well, we're going to go with this set list for this month, next month, the first week of the month, we don't play at all what we do. Or over the winter, you get like uh, nine set lists. And so by you, you cycle them so much that it doesn't matter. Uh, you don't get sick of playing the same things over and over again. Uh, anyway, that's just my little tip. And uh, yeah, tell me what you guys think.